Are you sick and tired of cluttered, busy, ugly blogs and websites, unimpressed by complicated tutorials, confused and overwhelmed by all the possibilities, afraid to build a blog or website even though you know you need one? Hi, my name is Hogan and I'm going to show you how to make a blog in under 90 minutes without any coding, CSS, HTML or any technical experience. In about 60 seconds, I'm going to show you exactly how anyone can make it, whether you're 15 or 55. If you want to spend months learning code or have a few thousand dollars to spend to hire an agency, then this is definitely not for you. But if on the other hand, you're not a tech savvy person and you've never built a blog, if you've tried and failed but you still want to make a beautiful blog of your dreams quickly and cheaply, if you want a step-by-step -step guide to walk you through from start to finish, if you're sick of free website builders that aren't really free and have a million limitations, then this tutorial might be the smartest investment you make with your time in the vital weeks and months ahead. This tutorial was made because of popular requests from people who watch my other tutorial which has nearly 200,000 views in just a few short months. Thousands of people just like you found me on YouTube have successfully built their blogs and websites already. Anthony says, this was by far the best free tutorial I've seen to date hands down. It outperformed some paid tutorials on lynda.com, I'm not kidding. Armin says, for me personally, this was the most helpful video ever in the topic of web designing. And now you're probably wondering, do I have to build this exact same blog? You certainly don't, I've built some demos to show you that the possibilities are endless. You can check them out at hoganchua.com forward slash demo, the link is also in the description. By the way, I might say website instead of blog because they're pretty much the same thing. A blog is basically a place where you write your story which is then displayed on a website for people to read. Don't worry, if you're an aspiring blogger, then this is definitely the tutorial to follow. I'm not going to waste your time, I'm going to log in and show you how easy it is to use. So let's turn on the builder. As you can see, everything is separated by rows and columns. I'll show you how to use it in just a moment. If you don't like this specific design, you can move the things around and change it. For example, you can move this module up here, or you can move it back down here. And to delete it, we simply just click the X. We can even copy and paste. This uses a 100% front-end drag and drop builder. I'm sure you like to emulate and take inspiration from popular blogs and websites, but you held back because you thought you couldn't do it. But now, if you can dream it, you can build it. Over the years, websites have evolved from 1998 to 2005 to 2010 and now 2016 and if you're building a website using code hiring an agency or even following another tutorial without drag and drop that's either going to be a headache or leave a hole in your pockets when you want to update it with this you'll be able to keep up with all the design changes and save that cash there are millions of websites today so do you really want to have the same website as someone else how will your visitors differentiate you? Would you wear the same clothes as someone else to a party? No, you wouldn't. So why would you want to build the exact same website? So I'm going to show you how the layouts work and how to build something totally unique. So as you can see, we have rows here and we're able to set the columns for each of these rows. Now, do you want to see how easy it is to add content? If you want to add text, then you can drop the text module inside the box. Add the text and you have an individual styling panel with over 600 fonts to choose from. And then you can save, and there you go. If you want an image, you can drop an image module, upload your favorite photo, and then click on save, and there you go. If you want a video, you can drop a video module, and then you can copy your URL of your favorite YouTube video and paste it into here, and then click on save. If you want a slider, you drop a slider module, you also have the option to display either blog post, images, or even text. So if you want to add a map, you can drop a map module, add your address, and click on save. So as you can see, that's pretty easy to do. Anyone can do it. And if you don't like this blog post, then you can change the layout for that as well. If you want to display all the blog content on the homepage, you can also select this layout and then click on save. If you want to display a smaller blog post and then you can select this one. If you want to hide the feature image, you can also hide that really easily. You get the picture. Also, adding blog posts is just as easy. If we head over to the back end, we can click on posts, add new, add title, add the text and images and video into the editor. 
which is very similar to Word. Enter in your categories and tags, and then add a picture image, and then click on update. And then we can click on view post. And as you can see, that's really easy to update. Is it mobile responsive? There are more mobile devices than there are people according to GSMA intelligence. These days, everyone on the street, public transport, even in cars are staring at the mobile screens. So you would definitely want a website that is mobile friendly. And luckily for you, it's also mobile responsive. So it's gonna fit into any mobile screen really easily. And as you can see, this is what it looks like on an iPhone 5. You can also check it out on your mobile device right now. Have you thought about adding an online shop later? This is also WooCommerce compatible, which means you can build an online store to sell digital products such as eBooks. People can pay for it and then download it instantly after they've paid. Or if you want to sell physical products such as clothing or shoes, this is just a sample page I created to show you as an example. I'll also make a video on how to set it up. I'll let you guys know where to find it at the end of the video. On the home page, you might want to change to a different sidebar and you might want to show your most popular blog post along with some thumbnails. And you can do that too, which I'll show you in the tutorial, which is really, really simple. For example, this is the one that I did for the travel blog. And as you can see, it looks really cool as well. Do you want to add extra functionality to your blog? What I mean by this is in the future, you might want to allow people to make appointments online Add a members area add a forum add tables or even a pricing table and you can do that as well really easily you can extend the functionality of your website by adding the free or paid plugins it's just like the app store you have for your iPhone or Samsung for example this Instagram feed is also a plugin which I'll show you how to add in the tutorial. So whatever business or brand, you can find a plugin to help enhance your blog or website without any technical experience. On this platform, there are over 40,000 different plugins, while other platforms such as Wix only have around 200. Perhaps you wanna have a different header or a footer design, and you can change that with a few clicks. You can even remove the footer or the header with a simple selection on the back end. For example, this website here, and yes, you can even add a background video just like this one as well. Is your audience not English speaking? This is also WPML compatible, which means you can get that WordPress plugin and translate your website into different languages. Did you want to know how easy it is to add advertisements and make money? Even though I don't like websites that display thousands of ads on the sidebar, you can do that very easily, but just don't go overboard. Drop an image module, add the logo or the ad of the website you're promoting, and you can add a direct link or your affiliate URL right here and then click on save. So you can either rent spaces out on your website for a few hundred bucks a month, even a few thousand if you're very lucky, or promote favorite brands via affiliate link with just a few clicks. Are you worried that it's not search engine friendly? Billions of people use search engines to find information. And if your website is not ranked highly on Google, then basically you're missing out on the best customer because they're looking for exactly what you have to offer. There are over 1,000 people searching for food blogs every single day. And if you're here, that means you're going to get hundreds or even thousands of more visitors to your website. Isn't that what you want? More readers, more followers, and more money. Obviously, this isn't an overnight thing. You'll still need to optimize it. But since it's built on the WordPress platform, you're building on the right foundation. The same can't be said about other website builders which are built on Flash or just don't have a good search engine friendly structure. In summary, I'll teach you step by step with no steps skipped to build this entire blog in under 90 minutes. You'll be able to see and build whatever type of blog you want in real time, be able to edit wherever or whenever you want, even on your tablets or mobile devices. Join thousands of others who have built their blogs and websites already. Join top bloggers who are using the same platform, WordPress, to make six figures a month. For example, Smart Passive Income by Pat Flynn, and also Entrepreneur on Fire by John Lee Dumas. Other sites such as Forbes, CNN, Jay-Z, and even Katy Perry use it. Again, you can check out the possibilities at hoganchua.com forward slash demo, and the link is also in the description. As attractive as this tutorial and website builder offer is, only a small amount of people actually follow through and start building. Although that's okay for me, it still bothers me personally because I know how much 
the people who have actually followed the tutorial have benefited. I read their emails, I talk to them on Facebook, I reply their comments on YouTube, and I also see their completed websites. And hundreds of people have told me that my previous video was the best tutorial for making a website. And this is no different, but it is for a blog. Because of this, I just hate the thought of someone not following the tutorial because some error or omission in my explanation. So that's why I want you to not let fear hold you back and ask any questions that you may have. But I suggest you to just try it and you probably won't regret it because you'll learn something anyway. And understand that building a website is like building a house. You wanna build your house on a very solid foundation that allows you to expand add new levels as your family grows. It's stressful and costly and a waste of time to move your website from one platform to another. I truly believe that this tutorial will get you from A to B the quickest, easiest and cheapest without compromising on functionality and also your ability to scale later on. Anyways, for those of you who want to act, let's go through what we need. Okay, so I'm gonna go over everything that we need and also the cost. The first thing that we're gonna need is a domain name and basically what that is, is for example, YouTube's domain name is youtube.com. Our one would be your business name or your name.com. Second thing we're gonna need is hosting. Hosting is where all your website files are gonna be stored so people can access your website 24 seven all around the world. The third thing is we're gonna install WordPress, the themes and also the plugins. The fourth thing is we're gonna configure those settings the fifth thing is the fun part, which is building the website. And I'm also going to be holding a competition for the best built blog or website. And now I'm going to go cover the cost. And basically, as you can see, I'm actually in the website now. I'm going to turn on the Themify Builder. So let's double click on this. So I just want to show you how easy it is to use again. Okay, so before I tell you the cost, the truth is when I first started out, I thought, you know, making a lot of money, thousands of dollars a day without investing much money or even time that, you know, is very possible, you know, because you see all those ads and everything like that. You think everything's like quick and you can get everything for free. So I've been the guy literally, you know, trying to get free websites, you know, free website builders, free hosting and free everything. But sooner or later, you know, you realize that there is no such thing as a free lunch. Like, for example, if you get a free domain on Wix or any free website builder, it's normally something like yourname.wix.com. So it has their extension on it. So when people ask you, you know, what is your domain name? Like, it's more professional to say, you know, miamilla.com rather than uh, miamilla.wix.com and it's also easier to remember and the thing is they have a lot of limitations if you don't pay so you have to pay to actually unlock a lot of the features and most of the time it's actually more expensive because you're paying for the convenience so with that said the domain only costs you $13 per year which is about a dollar a dollar a month also the hosting is $12 a month so that's about 40 cents a day but to get started i've also got a coupon code which will help you get started for about one cent for the first month okay and installing wordpress the themes and plugins is free some of you may notice that the theme that we're going to use is the ultra theme by themify and it's actually a paid theme and you might be wondering how can i actually offer that for free a long story short is, you know, when I first started out building a website, I was looking for like a builder for my local website. I found Themify and I built a site using it. You know, it took me a long time to actually get the hang of it. So I thought, you know, why wasn't there any tutorials on it? So I asked Themify if I could make a tutorial and to share it on YouTube. And they were generous enough to allow me to do that because it creates a win-win situation for everyone. You know, it gets their brand more exposure. I can create tutorials. You guys can learn how to build a website using a really, really amazing theme. I think it's the best one out there, honestly. And yeah, if you guys don't believe me, then you can either contact them or you can check out my comments on the other YouTube videos. And honestly, I wouldn't make a video spending hundreds of hours doing it if it was illegal. So just think of it another way. So just like beauty products where brands give YouTubers their products to show their audience how to look like Lady Gaga, but instead I teach people how to make beautiful websites. Now, if you want additional support and updates, which I think if you're serious about your blog and website, you'll probably get that anyway. 
So you have that option there, but if not, you want to try it out for free and use it for free without support, then that is totally fine as well. And yes, this is the full theme without any restrictions. What I'm showing you right now is what you're going to get. It's not going to be like any upsell or anything like that to unlock any of the features. Okay, you can get additional plugins, but that is totally up to you. I think it's more than enough. It's more than, you know, what anyone needs. You can literally build anything with it. And another thing I want to discuss is that there are a lot of tutorials that are using free themes or themes that are built by just one person. The problem with that is, you know, if they decide they don't want to make themes anymore and disappear, then you have nowhere to go for any help. So you either have to hire a developer or you'd have to change themes which is quite annoying and stressful, which is like moving houses because you need to move all the content, you know, change, change everything. And that's going to take a long time as well. But since it's used by over 52,000 happy members, you can be sure that they're still around tomorrow. So you've got that safety net there. So, and the plugins is free, which I'm going to show you how to configure the settings for the WordPress, the themes and plugins. And then we're going to build the website, which is free. I spent, you know, hundreds of hours trying to create this tutorial for you guys. Um, I incorporated some design aspects of really popular websites. I tried to make it like sort of simple and modern and clean because I feel that's how websites are going these days, you know, like really simple, like Instagram, Pinterest, they, you know, they're going for simplicity because people don't want to have so much clutter and ads and pop-ups and all those things. It's really important. So that's why I made this design for you guys. And then we're going to have the competition. The competition, basically, we're going to give away $200 to the winners of the best design blog or website. I'm not sure how that's going to structure. I might have two winners or three winners or four winners, really depending on how many submissions we get. And you can submit your website at hoganshua.com forward slash competition. The entries will close on the 31st of January 2016 and the winners will be announced the week after. So make sure you subscribe and make sure you follow me on Facebook as I'll be announcing the winners there. For more information, check out the website and also check out the links below. Okay, so the total cost to get started is about $13, not $1,300 or even $130. That's about a return on investment, about 10,000% on the money actually saved. And one of the greatest entrepreneurs, Henry Ford said, if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. I understand a lot of people see blogging or making a website as an opportunity to provide extra stream of income, passive income, to create a better lifestyle. But the thing is, if you don't take any action, nothing will actually happen. And here is something that I read in a book called Disrupt You. And it says, you know, advances in 3D printing will allow anyone to print off anything they need at home, which threaten the jobs of 320 million manufacturing workers around the world. Self-driving cars, you know, trucks and drones will displace tens of millions of more workers. Automation of knowledge work will have a five to seven trillion dollar impact on white collar jobs. So as you can see, you know, things are really changing really fast. There's massive disruption and also the economy is changing but there are also big opportunities to be taking advantage of. And I think blogging and creating an online business is one of them, but only if you act. If you don't act, you know, things are gonna stay the same, but I feel if you learn how to make a website, you'll still need that skill because if you're hiring someone else, it's gonna take so much time to like communicate what you want and the design you want with them. And then they're gonna send you like a mock-up and then you're gonna go back and forth, back and forth. And in the end, you're gonna waste so much time. It's like so much easier to wake up and you know, you want to change something and you can do it yourself. So as you can see, like if I want to change this, then I can just log in and you know, change everything myself rather than sending an email to someone else or asking someone else to do it. It's just, you know, these days I feel everyone needs to have these basic skills. Okay, so with that out the way, let's get started. Okay, so we're going to get our domain hosting and we're going to get them both at the same place. You can go to hostgator.com or you can click on the pop-up that's going to pop up now that goes there. So hostgator.com and click on enter. So I've been using Hostgator for about five years or so and haven't had any major issues using them. So that's why I want to recommend them to you guys. And they also host 9 million other domains. So they've got to be doing something right. 
As you can see on the top right here, they also offer live chat support. So what that means is it basically eliminates the need for submitting support tickets. So you can get answers to your problems within a few minutes if you use their live chat option. And also you get a 45 day money back guarantee. And yes, there are cheaper options, but you gotta be aware of those ones which say they are free or that are super cheap because you get what you pay for and hosting is something that you don't really want to go cheap on because it's basically where all your files are stored. So if your host is having problems, then your site might not be live. So people go to your website, but they can't access that. So in the long run, it might cost you hundreds or even thousands of dollars. And you certainly don't want that because moving host is another headache in itself. So anyways, let's click on get started. And if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see that there's three different plans, Hatchling, Baby, and Business Plan. Hatchling basically means that you can only host one domain. Baby Plan means you can host unlimited domain. And let's not worry about the Business Plan because I think the Baby Plan is enough because it lets you host unlimited domains. So basically, you can even share this hosting account with a friend or even two friends and then split the you know monthly bill. So what you need to do next is click on here. Now, the first thing we're going to do is choose and register a new domain. If you already own a domain, then you can click on this option on the right hand side. But right now, all you need to do is to type in a domain name for your business or your name, just anyone you like, but not all of them are available. So for example, if I type in Mia Miller and then click on the outside here, and it will show that it's unavailable. So if it's unavailable, then you have to try to choose one that's available. And I highly recommend choosing a .com extension because that's what people normally type in there. So let's just try another one, for example, and click on the outside. So as you can see, that is ticked and that is added to your cart. Okay, so you scroll down a little bit. If you want to get domain privacy, you can get that, but I don't think you need that. So let's untick this. For the package type, make sure it's the baby one or hatchling plan. So for the billing cycle, you can choose 36 months, which is three years, and you pay that upfront to get a bigger discount. But I normally choose just month to month. So click on that. And for your username, just type in any username that you want, for example, that, and security pin. Scroll down, and this is where we enter our information, okay? So type in your email address, your name, your phone numbers, and your address. So I'm gonna quickly fill all that in. Okay, so after you've filled all your details in, then you have to choose your payment method. So if you're paying by a credit card, then you have to type in your credit card details into here. So that's just an example. And the CV number is the number on the back of your card. Okay, and choose your expiry date. Or you can also pay by PayPal. So if you select this, then Afterwards, when you actually check out, then you'll have to log into PayPal and confirm that payment. So scroll down here and there are also additional services that I'm gonna untick for now and you can get these if you want later on. So don't worry too much about that. Now you can use the coupon code Snappy Day. I think sometimes they might offer a better coupon code, but you can use the coupon code Hogan One Cent. So that basically allows you to get started you know, with your blog for the first month, only one cent. Oh, and if you use my coupon code, that I get a small referral fee for that. So that helps me support my channel and also uh, lets me create more videos for you guys and it's much appreciated. So after you've done that, then you can check all your details and you can click on I've read and agreed to the terms and services and we're gonna click on check out now, okay? I'm not going to click on this because I already have an account, but after you click on it, you should get a congratulation page and within one or two minutes, you'll get an email to your email account that you put in here. So make sure you put the right email account and you should get all your details for your cPanel login and that's where we're going to install WordPress. Okay, so I'm going to head over to my email now. Okay, so log in to your email and you should get an email something like this and click on that. This is where your control panel, they give you your URL and also your username and password. So click on here and then just basically copy over your username and password. So enter your username and also your password. 
So you can just copy that password here directly into here and click on login. Now scroll down a little bit to quick install. Okay, close this pop up. Sorry, click on quick install and we don't need this anymore. So we're going to close that. Okay, so scroll down a little bit. You can either click on WordPress or click on here to install WordPress. Select install WordPress and select the domain name that you just bought. As you can see, I have a few domain names, so just select that. And you don't need to put anything here unless you want to install it on iammiamiller.com forward slash test or another name. Okay, so just leave that empty for most of you guys. For the admin email, just type in your email address. Blog title, just type in your blog title and you can change that later on. For the username, so this is going to be our login username and first name and last name. Okay, so check the details there and then click on install WordPress. Select no thanks and that's going to take just a second to install. Okay, so it says your installation is complete and if you click down here, they'll give you a URL. If you have just bought the domain and hosting from HostGator, then it might not be set up yet. It might take 15 to 20 minutes or, you know, two to three hours. And worst case scenario, it would be 24 hours. But generally, you can come back within 15 to 20 minutes and your website should be set up. And when you click on it, it should look something like a login page, something like that. Okay. And basically, you know, you can take a little break now and come back, but I'm just going to continue the tutorial. So click on your username and copy that over, paste it into here. And for the password, just copy that directly and paste it into here. And then we're going to log in. Now, once we log in, we're going to see this little message here. It says your site is currently displaying a coming soon page. So everyone besides you basically sees a coming soon page. So when you're ready to launch your site, you're going to click on this button here. Okay. So basically what we're going to do now is basically configure all the WordPress settings and, you know, basically have a fresh start to do that. First of all, we're going to change our username. So go to users and actually we're going to change our password. Sorry, click on all users and then click on edit. Scroll down a little bit and generate password. Okay, so type in your new password that you want and make sure you remember that password. Okay, so confirm that password and then update the profile. Okay, so once that is done, we're basically going to go settings and permalinks. Basically, we're going to change the link structure. So it's default set to day and name. We don't want something like that. We want something that displays only the post name. So what that means is when you add a page or add a post, it's going to be the post title or the page title. So that's better for search engine purposes and also better for the user. So they know what your page is talking about. So if your page has something like, you know, question mark P equals one, two, three, then people can't tell what that page is about. So it's better to select this one and then click on save changes. Now, basically now we're going to go to plugins and deactivate everything, you know, cause we want everything clean and simple. So we're going to deactivate and also delete everything. Now, after you've deactivated that, make sure you delete that and click on apply. Okay. So click on yes, delete these files and data. Okay, so all those are gone. Now what we're going to do is go to our pages and also delete our pages. So sample page, we're going to go to trash and click on trash up here again. Then we're going to delete that permanently. Okay, once that is done, we're going to delete the sample post as well. So this hello world post, we're going to click on trash and then delete that permanently. Okay, so we're going to check our website now. Okay, so it looks pretty plain and simple, but basically we want to, you know, spend about 15 minutes configuring all the settings and get everything ready before we actually start building our website. It's basically like, you know, if you're cooking dinner, then 
you have to go buy the groceries and then you know you have to prepare the food and then you start cooking so that's basically our process now what we need to do is install the theme so to do that you can either go to the YouTube description or you can go to my website to actually download the theme okay so hogenshua.com and click on enter so what we're going to do is click on blog okay okay so it should be the first result here or you can find it here so it's how to make a blog tutorial so click on that post here and now you can download the theme and also download the images as well basically the images is what we're going to use for the tutorial so basically you can follow along in the tutorial uh, with all the images and things like that okay so download the theme to your computer just click on that and it should automatically download and also download the images as well okay so if you're using a Mac or a Safari browser sometimes this file here this file the theme it might automatically unzip into a folder so what you need to do is actually basically right click it and then you will need to recompress it into a zip file before we can actually upload it to our website okay so basically we're going back to our website now our dashboard and click on appearance and themes so we're going to click on add new and we're going to upload theme choose file so let's find our files okay so that's our theme and we're going to click on open and install now Sometimes people have a little bit of issues uploading this theme because it's going to show something like, you know, upload exceeded or something like that. And to solve that problem, make sure you check out my frequently asked questions as a lot of the questions have been answered already, especially for installing your website. Example, you might get a message, something like that. So just click on this button here and it'll scroll down and it'll basically tell you what to do. Okay, you can follow this tutorial uploading via cPanel or if you're using something like localhost then you can upload your theme um, directly into the yeah directly into the WP content uh, forward slash themes folder just by unzipping the actual theme first and then dropping the folder into this folder here okay? So if you have any problems with that, just ask in the YouTube section. Now let's go to here. And as you can see, that's installed successfully. Uh, click on activate. And that's basically going to activate our theme. So we're going to close that. And as you can see, it says this version is available for updates. You know, don't worry about this. Um, to follow along the, in the tutorial, you don't need to update. Basically, you know, I made the tutorial um, using this version of the theme and this version of the theme the layouts is a little bit different so if you've actually finished building the whole entire website you know send me a message a send me an email um, send me your URL saying that you finished the tutorial and for those of you who have you know finished I'll send you the updated version okay or I think it's a really good idea to actually you know sign up for the support and you also get automatic updates so basically when you update now they'll give you a username and password and you can log in and it will automatically update okay so anyways let's continue with the tutorial so we're going to install the plugins so go to plugins and add new okay so we're basically going to search some plugins and the first one we're going to search is for the Instagram feed so type in Instagram feed and click on enter and it should be the first result here and then click on install now and activate that plugin now we're going to repeat the process for easy Google fonts the MailChimp for WordPress and also contact form 7 so I might go a little bit quicker so go to add new and then MailChimp for WordPress, click on enter and should be the first result here with 300 active installs, install and then activate. Now the same for easy Google fonts, so add new, 
easy Google Fonts, enter. And this one here with 200 active installs, install now. Activate plugin. And the last one, which is contact form seven. Click on enter. And this one with over a million active installs. So install that now and activate that plugin. Okay, so we've just installed all our plugins and basically right now we're gonna configure each of these settings. So to start off first, we might configure the MailChimp one. So just click on MailChimp. And if you sign up with MailChimp, you can get the API, which is a sort of a code that you paste into here to basically connect your MailChimp accounts with the MailChimp for WordPress plugin. Okay, so you can get your API key by clicking here. So you need to sign up for a MailChimp account. Um, you can get started for free. So I'm not gonna show you that in the tutorial because some people might probably don't need it yet. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you how to actually configure the form. So click on the forms and for a form title, just, you know, enter any form one, any title. So just add the form, I guess. And now you can basically preview the form to see what it looks like. Let's just close those, we don't need those. Okay, so this is what the form looks like at the moment. And basically I want to delete this thing here because there's no need to have email addresses and then your email addresses again, okay? So to do that, what we need to do is basically just highlight here and delete, maybe just click on delete, so that moves up one. And now what we can do is to save the changes. Okay, so basically we're gonna preview the form to see what changes have been made. Okay, so this is what we want, that's what we want. And you can play around with the settings and variables here, but I'm not gonna dwell too much on this stuff here. So as you can see, you can also change the messages and you know the settings and also the appearance. Okay, so basically we're gonna leave all that now that's all we need to do for this tutorial. Now we're gonna set up the Instagram feed. Click on the Instagram feed. Actually go back for a second. And I just wanted to show you the short code. So where is the actual short code that we need, okay? So this is the short code. So if you copy the short code and paste it anywhere on our website, it will actually display our email opt-in box, okay? So I'm just letting you guys know this is where it is. And we're gonna come back and get this later. So click on your Instagram feed. And basically what we need to do is to click on login and get my access token. Okay, so basically when you click on that, you'll need to actually log into your Instagram account. And after that, you basically need to confirm that you allow this Instagram feed app to actually um, give it permission to actually log in. So, and it automatically adds the access token and the user ID here. And then all we need to do is to copy the access token, copy that and paste it into here. And for the user ID, we need to copy that and paste it into here, okay? Now we're going to save changes. And as you can see, that was step one. Now we're gonna move on to step two, which is customize. So we're gonna scroll down here and we're gonna to go to the photos tab. So for the number of photos, we're going to show six photos initially, and you can change that to any number that you want. We're also gonna set the columns to six, and for the padding around images, I'm gonna select zero. So basically what that means is the space around the images, okay? Now we're going to save changes, and then we're gonna scroll down for the header. We're going to deselect show header, scroll down a little bit and show and load more button. I'm going to deselect this because we want to, you know, keep it a very minimal theme. So I want to remove anything that's sort of unnecessary. So that's why I want to remove all of this stuff here as well and show the follow button. We're going to basically going to remove that as well and then scroll down and basically that's it. Okay. So we're going to save the changes. And after you've done that, you go to number three, step three, display your feed. And again, they have a short code. So if we copy this code here to our clipboard and paste it into anywhere on our website, 
then it will show our Instagram feed. Okay, so we'll come back and get this code later on. So basically now we've basically set up all our plugins and downloaded our themes and set up everything on the back end. So we're basically going to add some pages and add our blog post and then we're going to configure the actual theme settings and after that then we're going to build our website. Okay, so basically now we're going to add in the pages and also add in the blog posts after that. So we're going to go to pages first and click on that. And then we're going to add new. We're going to add our home page first. So type in home and then click here on publish. So we're going to repeat the process for the rest of the pages. So click on add new. Now we're going to create the about page publish now add new again the contact page publish and then add new the blog page and publish so to create any other pages then you just click on add new and then basically add in the title and then publish okay so we're going to check the website to see what it looks like now so just click there and as you can see those are the pages and it's in our navigation bar. So now we're going to basically add in the post. So go back to your dashboard and click on post then we're going to click on add new. Now to add in the content basically it's much easier just to go to my website and go to the blog and click on the how to make a blog tutorial. Okay so scroll down a little bit as you can see we've got all the table of contents here and just click on adding blog post and it should scroll down here and we've got the text to add here for example summer inspiration for the title so we can just copy that directly over and paste as plain text and the same goes for the text in the box so let's just copy this and paste that in so as you can see you might be just a single line the toolbar here make sure to click on this toggle toolbar thing so you can actually see all the rest of the options okay so when you click on that it disappears when you click on that it comes back again okay okay so after you've added in the text you can also add in your images really easily so click on add media and click on upload files select files and for example if you want to upload this image then just click on that open and it's going to upload to your computer. After you've done that, you can set this alignment to the center. So it's going to centerize this image and also make sure it's linked to none. The size, you can change the size of that as well. So for example, large and insert that into the post. Okay, so that's inserted into the post. And if you want to add a YouTube video, then you can just go to YouTube and find in your favorite video, copy this URL and basically just paste as plain text and in a few seconds it's going to load up like that okay and to center it then select that and click on that to align center okay so it should align into center once you've actually published it okay so i don't want to add any of that at the moment so i'm just going to remove that so you can do that really easily just click on the x here okay now make sure you hit backspace like that Okay, so your cursor is here. Now we're going to add in a new category. So just add in a new category. And for example, this might be inspiration. So we're going to click on add new. And as you can see, that's ticks. You want that. And for the tags, just add in some tags. So for example, summer favorites, and then click on add. And right now we're going to set in the feature image. So set feature image. And this is the actual feature image that I want to set in, which is for blog post one. So select that and set the feature image. Now what you want to do is to try ignore all this stuff at the bottom first. Okay. Um, don't worry too much about that. So click on publish. And then we're going to view the post to see what it basically looks like at the moment. Okay. So basically that's what it looks like without any customization okay so it looks all right already and as you can see it's taking shape now we're going to add in another post so you get used to it so you can click on add new up here or you can go back to your dashboard so for example add new post click on that 
and then we're going to basically go back here and also get the title so we're just going to copy and paste okay so it's really easy okay so basically paste in the title here paste is plain text now go back here and copy this text here copy that and paste that into here as well so make sure when the cursor is blinking here to actually right click and paste as plain text if you click on somewhere here then it might not actually show up okay so click where the cursor is blinking then paste as plain text so basically it's a word editor and you can set the alignments here and also if you want to add a link so to add a link you just need to highlight the text here and to click on insert and add link so you paste your URL into here and add link so when people click on this link then it should go straight to that YouTube video okay and to unlink that just highlight that again and click on remove link okay so you've got your bold you've got your italic and you've got your color here so that's really simple and after you've done that then we're going to add in a new category so for example life add in new category and for the tags we're going to set that to Robert Frost and click on add and then for the feature image set feature image this one will be number two so select files and blog post number two click on open just wait for that to upload okay so click on set featured image and basically now um, we're done with that and you can also enable comments on the page so to do that click on screen options here and select on discussion and then we're going to scroll down here and it's going to show you know if you want to allow comments or um, allow the trackbacks and pingbacks on the page and you can get the definition by clicking on that and basically we're going to publish that and I'm going to show you what I mean by the comment so people can leave a comment on your blog so we're going to view that post to see what that looks like and we're going to scroll down and as you can see people can submit a comment like that okay okay so now what we're going to do is go back to the dashboard and we're going to configure the actual theme settings so go back to your dashboard and hover over ultra that is a uh, name of our theme and click on themeify settings okay so for your fabicon Basically what a Fabicon is, it's your little logo that shows up here. See here, that's my one and YouTube one is here. And if you want to upload one, you got to make sure you upload a PNG file, which means that logo is a transparent file, okay? To get your logo, you know, I'm not going to teach you how to make a logo. It's going to make the video too long. And I really think it's way better to actually get someone else to do it for you. If you go to fiverr.com, you can get a lot of services, for example, logo designs and a ton of other stuff for five bucks. And if you type in logo design, oops, okay, and click on enter, then you can browse by the highest rating or recommended ones. And as you can see, this one, this one has over 20,000 reviews, I think. Okay, so 20,000 buyer reviews with quite a high rating. So, you know, spend $5 and you might get a good logo here. And then they're going to send you a PNG file, as you can see here. And then you can actually upload that logo directly into here. So upload your PNG logo here and click on open. Then you can have that little icon. Okay. And if you go to ultimate website resources, then you can also use a coupon code to actually get a further 20% off your first purchase. Okay. So if you scroll down here and then you can go here and use this coupon code Hogan 2016 for a 20% discount on your first purchase. But you know, if you have a bigger budget, then I recommend you use 99 designs. Basically you submit a brief a logo design brief of what you want after you've done that people are gonna submit their design so basically you're holding a little contest and it's a little bit more expensive so as you can see here I want a good meaty design you know you've got 140 entries so you've got a ton of entries and I think the quality is better 
and also the price is a bit more as well. So if you click on that, then you can see, you know, the, the samples here of what other people have done, okay? And you can launch your own contest and also watch a video to see how that works. Okay, so that shouldn't be a problem. Now what we're gonna do is scroll down a little bit. And as you can see here, you've got your header code and also footer code. You know, if you have Google Analytics, then you can paste in the Google Analytics code into here. Just make sure to paste it into here, as you can see here. Useful if you need to add JavaScript or tracking code, paste the code into here and then scroll down. And for the Google fonts, make sure you click on this one, show all Google fonts. And then we're gonna save. Okay, now let's just scroll back up and go to default layouts. Now there are a ton of options here, okay? Don't worry too much about it. You know, don't get too intimidated about it. So basically what we're gonna do is I'm gonna edit and talk about the things that we're gonna edit, okay? So for the default index layout, this is basically for the pages such as the archive pages, the category pages, the search and tag pages. What pages that is, so I'm gonna just show you. So just click on that. And as you can see here, there are archives here and category pages as well. Basically, if you click on the archive page, then this is the default layout, okay? So now basically, if you change it here, like index sidebar option to something like this, which is a just basically a plain screen, then your sidebar here should disappear, okay? So click on save. And then if I just refresh the page, it should disappear. Okay, so as you can see here, that disappears, okay? This happens for all the pages that it says here. So for example, the archive pages, the category pages, and the search pages, and all this. also the tagged pages. This is the category pages. And yeah, so if you edit the settings here, then it's going to change the layout for um, default layout settings, okay? So basically, I'm going to just keep it as that. And I'm gonna scroll down here. Don't worry about all these. Now I want to hide the post method for the author. So click on hide. And also the category, hide that as well. And also the tags. Okay, so these stuff is basically really just optional, but for the specific design that we're creating, make sure these are selected. And you can also hide the post date as well. So what the post date is, is basically the so basically when you click on that, this is the post date and we can hide that as well. So I want to hide that. So click on yes. Now scroll down and for the auto featured image. So if you don't select a featured image, it's going to basically use the, the image that you have inputted in your blog post as the feature image. So I'm going to select that, click on yes. Now after you've done that, we're going to scroll down and you're going to see the default single post layout. And what the single post layout is basically is if you scroll back up and you go to your blog page, then these are your posts. So the road less traveled. And this is basically your default single post layout. Okay. Every setting that we change here is going to affect your post layout. Okay. So let's go back here. What we're going to choose is the third option. So we're going to have a blank one. Okay. We're going to scroll down a little bit. Then we're going to hide the author again for the post meta. Hide the author and hide the category and also hide the tags because I feel that, you know, it's not really required, you know, all this additional information and it just adds to the clutter. So that's why I want to remove that. We're going to scroll down a little bit until the post navigation. Now for the post navigation, show only posts in the same category. And then we're going to scroll down to the default page layout. So what the page layout is, is basically these pages here. So for example, if we click on about, then as you can see here, the default layout shows the sidebar as well. I don't want it to show the sidebar, okay? And I don't want it to show the title as well. So what we need to do is to basically click on that option, the blank option, hide the title, click on yes, and page comments, we're going to disable all the page comments, okay? Then we're gonna click on save. So now we're gonna to go to the theme settings and scroll down a little bit. And basically 
this is where we're going to edit the header design. The header design is basically the design here. So this is called the header. And if you scroll down here, this is called the footer. So basically we're going to change the layout of it. And that's really simple. So just remember where it is, you know, themeify settings, theme settings, and then scroll down here to theme appearance. Okay. And for the header design, we're going to choose the third option. Okay. So it's like a skinny type of header and we're going to disable the sticky header. What the sticky header is when basically when you scroll down the menu navigation still shows up there. Okay. So I'm basically going to disable that. I don't want that. And I'm going to exclude the site tagline. I also don't want the search, search form thing here. You can keep that there if you want, but I'm going to exclude that and also exclude the RSS feed thing. Exclude that. Now scroll down and for the footer design, we're going to keep this as default and we're going to exclude the site logo. So scroll down here. That's basically the site logo down here. I don't need it. So that's why I'm going to remove it. So like that, scroll down here and the image filter. So what the image filter is, is basically when I change it. So image filter, I'm going to change that to grayscale and let's just save for example. Now let's go back here and refresh this page and I'll show you what I mean. So there you go. So it adds a filter to that image by default. It's going to go grayscale. And when you hover over it, it's going to show the color. What I'm going to do is keep that as none. And then for the image hover filter. So when I actually hover over the image, then that's going to be a grayscale and apply to all images. Now we're going to scroll down. This is basically the animated background feature. So you can add an animated background color. So what I basically mean by that is, okay, I'm just going to show you. So click to enable animated backgrounds in footer, click on save, and then I'm going to refresh this page. Now if you scroll down, okay, so basically that's going to flash different colors. Um, it looks really cool if you're building a very sort of, you know, modern, funky, you know, hippie website. But for this tutorial, we're not going to add that and you can add that if you want to. You can also set the different colors here as well. If you really want to set this, then I recommend watching my other tutorial, which is the how to make a drag and drop WordPress website, which I launched a few months ago. So if you check out my channel, then you can learn how to actually use it for the website, leave that. And for the footer text, so what the footer text is, if you scroll down here, that's footer text one, and that is footer text two. So footer text one and footer text two. To remove this footer text here, all you need to do is to hit space and then it's going to remove it. And if you click on save, go back here and then refresh. And basically, as you can see, the footer one is gone. Okay. So that's how you do it. Basically, I want to retain that. So I want to keep that. So for footer text number two, if you'd like to support me and these free tutorials, then you can give a small credit, um, which will link back to my website and it'll be much appreciated. But if you think it doesn't look good on your website, then it's okay if you don't include it. Okay. So for those of you who want to add in a small credit, then go to my website and click on configure theme settings and it'll scroll down, scroll down a little bit until you see footer text number two. And then basically what we're going to do is basically copy this text here inspired by, and then you've got that code, which links back to my website. So copy that and go back to your theme settings here and basically paste as plain text. Okay. So once you've done that, click on save, we're going to refresh the page to see what that looks like. Okay. So we're going to scroll down a little bit. And as you can see, it's going to say inspired by Hogan Shua and then link back to my website. So as you can see, it looks pretty good. I don't think it's going to affect your website, but again, if you don't want to put it in, that's fine as well. What we're going to do now is we're going to add in the social links. I'm going to show you where to add that in. So for your social accounts, so click on social links tab and basically you can add in a image. Okay or you can use the default icons. So basically we're going to use the default icons and add in the links. Okay. So you should add in your unique link, which links to your Twitter profile. So it should look something like, okay. So if I scroll down here, 
and social links tab and then if we copy that URL over and paste that into here it should look something like you know Hogan sure um, probably your name here okay so I'm just gonna leave it as that default and you can also change the icon here but by default it's already got the correct icon you can also add in the icon color and the background color but for this we're going to set everything to the same color so icon color is going to be white and for the background color it's going to be black okay it's really important to make sure all these colors are coherent for a you know professional looking designed website so for your facebook then you can add in your facebook link i'm going to quickly add those in and quickly add the colors in as well okay and you can also delete it so for example if you don't have a google plus account you can either leave that empty and it's not going to show up or you can delete it for your youtube let's add that in and for example if you have an instagram account as you can see here it doesn't show up you can add in your own link so add link and title will be instagram and the link will be your unique url so i'm just going to copy this for the time being paste that into here and icon here we're going to select an icon so click on insert icon and scroll down a little bit as you can see there's tons of icons to choose from but we're going to find the instagram one so scroll down and you can see brand icons so it should be here somewhere there you go so instagram icon and again change that color and some of you might have a blog loving account so i'm going to show you how to add that in as well so blog loving and just copy that url paste it in insert icon the icon i think it's some kind of square okay i found it so plus circle and then change the colors as well so after you've done that click on save and we're going to go to our home page and it is time to start building okay so this is our home page we want a blank canvas and to do that that's really easy to do so we're going to go to customize okay so we're in customize click on this arrow button because by default it's going to select the emifier options click on that button there and then we're going to set a static front page what that means is basically it's going to set a default front page and we're going to set that to our home page so select a static page or you can just leave it to show your latest post as it is now if you're happy with that then you know you're good to go but for the tutorial we're going to select a static page front page is going to be home and we're going to click on save and publish and then once that is done click on the x button to close okay so as you can see we have a blank canvas to work on now i want to congratulate you guys for reaching the stage we've basically done all the hard work with getting the domain and hosting um, installing wordpress and the themes and plugins and, and configuring all the settings so i encourage you guys to all follow along because it's really important i think to follow along step by step because you're going to learn where all the buttons are and where all the settings and how everything works so then later on once you know where everything is it's so much easier to actually build your website and in the long run it's actually going to save you a lot of time so if you're tired make sure to take a break if you're not and excited follow along and basically i'm going to start from the top down okay so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to customize the navigation menu and as well as the styling and then the site title and logo okay so we're going to do the menus first and to do that we can go to the dashboard and then we can hover over appearance and click on menus so this is where we need to create a new menu so just name this menu main nav okay and create menu and basically we need to get these pages that we've created select these pages that were created or any other pages that you have and add to menu and now basically if we open up in a new tab then you'll see this is the navigation menu and it goes about blog and contact and then home as you can see here what we need to do is reorder them so to reorder them you just drag it and then drop it so however you like i think that's all right and you can also reorder them like this so if you put it like that that would mean that 
when you hover over home then the about would actually drop down from a drop down menu okay so i might show you what i mean by that so before that anyways make sure to click on these so automatically add new top level pages to this menu and also main navigation okay save menu and if we refresh the page then you should see it's drop down like that okay but we don't want that so we can do that or you can even do it another layer like that okay but for this tutorial we're going to leave it like that and save menu now we're going to head back to our website and we're going to edit the site title as well as the navigation style okay so go to customize okay so make sure you're in the themify options as you can see here themify options and select the advanced tab for more options so just click on that and then let's go to themify options and site logo and tagline so that's for this part here so click on that and as you can see you can change the site title to whatever you want so for example Mia Miller I like to add a little dot there now you can also add in your logo here so with the logo as I said before you can get your logo from Fiverr for five dollars or you can get your logo from 99designs if you have a bigger budget and willing to spend a little bit more and basically what you need to do is just click on this plus button and then upload the files and again the file should be a PNG file so it's a transparent logo type and then basically click on the logo that you have and click on open and then it'll upload here and then you'll insert the image okay you can also change the sizes here so once you've uploaded the logo then you can actually change the size here okay so you can try like 50 times 50 pixels first and then adjust it to whatever you need now what we're going to do is scroll down a little bit okay scroll down here and we're going to change the font for the actual site title so to do that this is where you choose the size so i want to change that to 16 pixels and okay so we're going to type it in here so i think it's Montserrat. that's how you pronounce it and what we're going to do now is change it to double a so basically that makes sure that is um in capital you can also change that around obviously okay so you can change the italic and all the settings here if you want also you can change the color and as you can see this logo or this site title is a bit higher than the main navigation but we can edit that a little bit later with the site logo position if we want later on but we're going to change the actual styling for this first before we edit that so let's go save and publish now click on that and basically we're going to go to the main navigation and we're going to scroll down a little bit to menu link and then we're going to change the size of that to 12 pixels and also change the font to the same font okay it's important to keep all the fonts the same um, maximum i think you know have two fonts but generally just have you know one font for your basic you know headings and stuff like that and then have another font for your body text okay so don't make too many fonts now you can select double a for that as well okay so that's all the same as well on the top we're going to scroll down a little bit so the menu link hover basically what that means is this is called the menu link and as you can see when you hover over the about uh link then it shows up red so we're going to change that color because you know we want a minimal look okay so we want to change that color to you can select the colors here obviously i've got a set code that i want to change it to so let's change that to 4d 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 and as you can see click on that once and it should update so when you hover over it it's like a, a dark gray can't really see it it's just very subtle and what we want to do now is also change the menu active link so what that is is as you can see now we're actually on the home page so that's why it shows up red so we want to change the color of that to just black so make sure you don't change the background color this is the background color and when you do that it basically adds a background to it so as you can see something like that okay so we're going to change this to just black just keep it nice and simple 
then what we're going to do is we're going to change the menu active link hover what that means is basically we're on the home page and this is the active link and when we hover over the active link it's going to change to this color that we set here and normally we just keep it the same color here just copy that and paste as plain text to keep everything the same now we're going to save and publish okay so as you can see my site title is all squished up well i think that's probably because I set the logo image size. So we delete that and hopefully it will go back. Okay, so let's just save and publish and hopefully that goes back to normal. Okay, so that's back to normal, but as you can see, it's not really aligned. So we want to move it down a little bit. So let's go back to customize. We can go to themify options. Then we can go to the site logo and tagline and we can set this to relative and we're going to add about 10 pixels to the top to move it down into the center a little bit and then we're going to save and publish and then close and then exit out of that okay so basically the top part is already done that's really easy to do if you follow along okay so right now we're going to turn on the builder and we're going to set the main image so what we need to do is actually just go to our row options and as you can see now this is where you choose your layouts this is where you can import and export and copy and paste. And this is your options button. And this is your duplicate button. And this is the delete button. Okay. We need to click on the row options and we need to add a background image. So to do that, we can click on browse library. Make sure to not click on upload because that automatically will crop your image. So it resizes your image and that's not good. So click on browse library and select files. Go to the folder that you've downloaded the image and click on the main image and click on open. And then we need to insert that file URL. For the background mode, select full cover. And then you can also change it to parallax scrolling if you want. And then basically we just need to save and exit. Okay, so as you can see, you can't see the full image yet. So what we need to do is we need to drop a text module into the first row. So grab a text module from down here and drag that in. And what we're going to do is we're going to add in an icon, click on icon. Now we can insert the icon and we can scroll down here and there are a ton of icons that you can use, but I want the arrow that points down. Um, I'm just going to add this in the code. Okay, because I already know the code. As you can see, you've got the, when you click on it, it inserts this code here. Okay, so I already know what the code is. So it's FA. So you can type this in. Okay, so make sure that is that. Now what we need to do is we need to link it. Okay, so we need to link it to the next row. So once people click on it, then it will actually scroll down to the next row. So you might be confused right now, but just copy this URL here, your URL, okay, your unique URL, and paste it into your link section. And then what I want you to do is to type in hashtag row number two, and then we're going to select the style. So this is the basically the size of it, and we're going to change that to large for the icon color we're going to change that to black so this is the hex code for black and to get the hex code you can go to something like color picker if you're unsure so go to colorpicker.com you might want to put that into your bookmark bar and then you can click on it anytime so you can choose any color here and you've got the hex code so for example black is um, triple zeros okay so what we need to do is to paste that into here the hex code and the background color we're just going to leave that we're going to insert icon and then we can go to that styling tab then we need to align everything into the center that basically aligns the text and everything to the center or you can highlight that and align center here it's going to be the same thing now what we're going to do is we're going to set some padding so if i save now then as you can see, you've got that arrow button here, but we need to actually um, add some space so that we can display the whole picture. So what I mean by that is double click this thing again, and then go to styling, go to padding, and then set this to 400 pixels to the top, 300 pixels to the bottom, then click on save. So as you can see, that's added that in. Okay, so that's really easy. 
For most things, um, I basically use padding. The difference between padding and margin is, so imagine the module has an invisible sort of box around it, okay? So padding is inside that box, but margin is outside that box, okay? So imagine this icon here has a little box around it, and then padding is basically setting the padding inside that invisible box, and margin is setting the space outside that box, okay? So for most cases, you'll only need to use padding, so don't worry too much about the margin. So that's all done, and obviously you can add your own picture into here. Okay, so you might be wondering where I got my images and how I actually crop my images. So you can go to my website and then click on Ultimate Website Resources, and then scroll down a little bit, and these are my top five recommendations, as you can see. This is the top seven free image sites that I've found and that you can use to gather all the images. But I find the best one is Unsplash because it's really simple. And I also find that the images are sort of more real, not really fake um, stock images. So I think using them on your site will make your site look a lot better. So for example, you can click on this, which changes the layouts. So you can scroll down and it's infinite scroll. So it's going to load up as you scroll down or you can search for your photos. For example, you wanna search for clouds, then you can click on the search button here, and then you can download your images. And how I actually crop it, I use a online photo editing software. So basically it's photo, so photo.com, and then I edit. And then I basically open the file, and I resize it, and then crop it to the size that I want, okay? and how I actually get the size that I want. I use a software called Jing, and you can also find that here, Jing by TechSmith, and if you click on that, you can download that for free. So what I basically do is I capture it. Let's go back to our website. I capture it and I get the size here like that. I record down the sizes and then I crop the images to the specific sizes that I need, okay? So that basically speeds up the website because sometimes we don't need a really big picture. I'm also going to make a video on how to crop images and where to find images. I'm going to upload it onto my channel, you know, after I upload this video to YouTube. So make sure to check out my channel to learn how to crop images. I think that's really important because I think, you know, finding images and cropping them is probably the most time consuming part of building a website and hopefully it will help you speed up that process, okay? So we're gonna move along now and we're gonna move on to row number two. So that's row one and this is gonna be row two. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the, our row options first. And if you remember, we set this button here to hashtag row number two. So we're gonna name this row. So scroll down here. And for the row anchor, we're going to set this to the same name that you put, okay, excluding that hashtag, row number two, and then click on save. So we're going to click on save, and I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. So close that, and let's refresh the page. And basically what happens is if you click on this button here, it's going to link to the row below that we've named row two. So if we click on it, then it should scroll down, okay? So basically you can link it to any row that you want. You just have to change the link here and also change the name to wherever you wanna link it to, okay? So turn on your builder. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna separate this row into two separate columns and the ratio that we're gonna set it as is two to one, something like this, because we're gonna put our sidebar here and our main content here. Obviously you can change the layout to whatever you want, but for this tutorial, we're gonna do it like this. Okay, so what we want to do is drop a post module into here. And basically this is gonna add our blog post that we set up a little bit earlier on. And we're gonna set up the post layout. And as you can see, you can change the different layouts. We're gonna select the third option here. So click on this. And then we're gonna set the display to none. So basically what that means is it's not gonna display the text. Okay, so select none or you can select excerpt, which is a, you know, a little summary of the text, or the whole content, which means all of the text of the blog post. But for this, we're gonna select none, and then we're gonna save. Okay, so that's done there. And now you can click on this, and obviously you can change the settings here. For example, if you wanna hide the post meta, which basically means I think the comment thing will be disappeared. 
Okay, so that's disappeared. Obviously, you can enable that if you want, but that's up to you. And you can play around with the settings here. For example, you might want to hide the post title, unlink the post title, or you want to hide the post date, and you can do that as well. What we're going to do now is to add a profile picture. Let's grab in a image module and drop that into there. We're going to browse library and upload the file. So we're going to upload this profile picture here and click on open. Just wait till that uploads and then insert that file URL. And what we're going to do is we're going to remove this, the image appearance. You can select this, which makes the image rounded. Okay, but then delete that and delete this and also that. If you want, you can copy this URL here and paste it into image link, paste it in and you can open in the live box. So I'll show you what that means. So when we save it and when we close it, when we click on it, it's going to open up into a live box. Okay, click on that. And as you can see, this picture here is too close to our row one. So we're going to add a little bit of padding. I'll show you how to do that. So turn on your builder and double click on this. First of all, I'm just going to delete this light box. I don't want that light box. And we're going to go to styling. I'm going to scroll down to padding. And we're going to set this padding to about 50 pixels for the top. So we'll click on save. So that basically means it's going to add a little bit of space there. So when we click on save and close that, then as you can see, there's a little bit of space there. So it looks much nicer. And as you can see, you can use padding for any. So we're going to turn on the builder. And now we're going to add in an about me, a short about me. So we're going to drop a text module below the picture. And then we're going to type in, you know, just hi, I'm Mia Miller or any, you know, description that you want. You can add that text there. It's really easy. So now we're going to go to styling tab. We're going to align the text or you can also align the text here as well. Center, but I'm going to do it here. Center. And then we're going to add a little bit of padding because we want a little bit of space uh, between there. We don't want it to be too close. So padding 25 pixels to the top and then we're going to save. Okay. So that's really easy. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add in our social widgets. And what we need to do is we need to drop a widget module underneath that text. And then for select widget, we're going to select this drop down and select in social links. And then for this, we're going to select open link in a new window. So when people click on the social icon, it's only open up in a new window. You can not select that if you want, but I generally prefer to have it like that. And then we're going to go to styling tab and we're going to align everything to the center. Okay. And then save. Okay. So as you can see, that's really easy to do and you can move these text modules anywhere you want. For example, you want it up there, you can move it around. Okay. So that's really easy. You can play around with the layouts later on, but I just want to show you how to add in the modules. What we want to add next is our sidebar. To add that in, we're going to drop a widget ties module. So we drop that into here below that uh, social icons. And then it's going to automatically select the sidebar. So just keep it as that and click on save. So as you can see, this is our sidebar. And right now after this, I'm going to show you how to edit the sidebar and its contents inside and also the styling a little bit later on. So we're going to click on save and then close that. And to edit the sidebar contents, we're going to go back to our dashboard. We're going to select appearance, um, just hover over appearance and go to widgets. Now this is our sidebar. So basically I'm going to open this up in a new tab. I'm going to close all these for the time being. And this is our sidebar thing here. What I like to do is I like to zoom out sometimes so I can see everything really clearly. Um, I can drag and drop really easily. I can zoom out you know, to something like that and you can see the whole website so clearly and you can drag and drop anywhere you like. So that's a good tip. So we're going to do that and we're going to the widgets here. And as you can see here, this is a sidebar and this is the search widget, recent posts, recent comments, archives, categories, and you can see that here. Okay. So we can arrange these to any order that we like, but for this specific 
one. We want to delete some of them. So to do that, we need to, we're going to delete the recent post. So we're going to delete that. Okay. And we want to delete the meta as well. Delete that. We also want to delete the recent comments. Delete that. And if you want to add it back in, then you can add that back into here, just like that. Okay. Just drag it in just like that. And that's really simple. And now what we're going to do is add in the MailChimp one. So MailChimp sign up form. We're going to drag this down here below the categories. Obviously you can move it up here if you want. And we're going to delete that title. So click on save. And now what we want to do is I'm going to show you how you can actually add in the little thumbnails next to the blog posts. So you can add in Themify most commented. So let's just drag that into here below maybe just there. To do that, we can change it, the title. So for example, we can change this to, you know, popular posts. Or you can hide that post title if you want. You can display the comment count if you want to, but we're going to leave those out. And for the thumbnail size, we're going to change that to, I think it was 120 times maybe 70. I can't really remember, but we're going to click on save and we're going to refresh that page. Oops, I forgot to display post thumbnail. Click on save again. And then we can refresh the page again. Okay, so as you can see, the thumbnail has shown up now. And you can do that for your website if you want to. And then we're going to okay, save that. And we're going to go back to our home page. And as you can see now, the fonts and everything, it's not aligned properly. And it doesn't look very good yet. But before we, you know, edit all of this stuff here, we're going to add another three more modules for our website. Bear with me as it's important to learn how to use the basics. And after we've done all that, then we're going to edit everything together. So it's going to save you time. Okay. So basically right now we're going to show you how to add in the gallery. So we've got turn on the Themify Builder. And then we're going to drop in a gallery module. So drop that into here. And then what we need to do is we need to change the layout of the gallery to showcase and insert gallery shortcode we're going to insert a gallery here and basically we're going to upload the files and upload the files that i've put in here slider one slider two and slider three i think you can just control and select all of them so if you can press command or control and then select three of them and upload them together click on open and wait a second for that to upload and then we're going to add that to gallery so you can select those, make sure those three images are selected and add that to gallery. Okay, I think we actually missed one picture. So we're going to upload the last one, slider four and open that and then select these four images for our gallery, add to gallery, update gallery, and it's going to include the short code here. Okay, so that's done. Then we can change the image appearance if you want to, but we're going to deselect that and go to styling and align everything to the center which basically means we're going to align the little thumbnails into the center, as you can see. So as you can see, the thumbnails are all in the center. So we're going to click on save, close that. Okay, so the gallery here, so when you click on it, and then it's going to um, change the images, okay? So that's how you add a gallery in. And what we're going to do now is we're going to add in a shop link. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So turn on the builder. And let's say you have a online shop and you want to link that from your homepage to your online shop. So what I like to do is I like to drop in a box module below the gallery. And then basically I'm going to type in shop. Oops. And I'm going to set this to our heading one tag. So select that. And if this is not showing up, make sure you toggle that thing. And then we're going to insert a link. So we're going to link it to our shop page. So for example, we're going to copy our URL and normally our shop page will be something like that. Okay. So our website forward slash shop, and then we're going to add a link. You can also set to open link and a new tab if you want to, but I'm just going to leave that and add link. And obviously you can link it to any um, page that you want to. You might not be a shop page. You might be your blog page. You might be, you know, your contact page or anything like that. So after that, we want to scroll down and for the box color, just leave it as that. For the appearance, we want to deselect these two things. And for styling, we click on the styling tab. And for the background image, we're going to upload a new image. 
So upload a file and for this one we're going to use shop and open that. Insert the file URL. For the background repeat we're going to change that to full cover. And then we're going to scroll down and we're going to align the text to the center. Click on that. And then for the padding we're going to add, actually for the link, we're going to add the link color. By default the link color I think might be blue or red or something like that but we want to change it to white to make it look uh, really nice. So change that to white and you can also change the text decoration but just leave that empty. For the padding we want to add 50 pixels to the top, 50 pixels to the bottom and then we're going to save. Okay so we've added that in and that looks pretty good already. Click on save and right now we're going to add in our Instagram feed into our row number three. So this is basically row number one and this is row number two. Scroll down, this will be row number three. And we're going to turn the builder. We're going to drop in a divider module. So what that is, is basically a, a line. We're going to add a little line to separate our content a little bit. You can, you don't have to add this in, but I think it looks nice. So stroke thickness, I want it to be one pixel. For the divider color, we want to change it to a very light gray. So we're gonna, you can change the colors here, but I already know the code, so just type that in. ED, 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 and we're going to click on save. And that's basically, you might not be able to see it, but there's a really light gray line there. And what, what we're gonna do is we're gonna type in our title for Instagram. You don't have to include this, obviously, but I wanna put that in. So add in a text module and then type in Instagram, you can align center here and then we're going to save. Okay, so that's done. Now we're going to add in our short code for Instagram so it's going to display our feed. So to do that we just right click that and open in a new tab. What I want to do is go to Instagram feed and copy that short code, it should be display your feed. And just copy that. And obviously there are a ton of options here that you can play around with and you can use these short codes to display a basically a different display. But by default I think this looks good already. So we're gonna drop a text module into here. Paste as plain text. And then we're basically gonna just click on save and hopefully it's gonna show up after we refresh the page. So click on save here and close this thing here. And we're going to refresh the page and hopefully that shows up good. Okay, so as you can see, all our layout for our home page is done. Congratulations again. It's pretty easy to do. And obviously you can move everything around to anywhere that you like. Um, if you like the tutorial so far, make sure to give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment down below as it really helps me out and it's much appreciated. Now we're going to move on to basically customizing the page fonts and also doing some styling work, um, changing the colors a little bit to make everything sort of match up. Okay, so click on customize. Okay, so click on themify options and select the advanced tab. So basically we're going to start from the top down so we don't get confused and I'll explain where we're editing and everything. Okay, so for the body, what that means is basically anything inside the website, the sides, the footer, and also the header. So the default font, basically. So we're basically going to choose one font and stick to it. The font that we're going to choose is Lato. We're going to set the size first to about 16 pixels for the body font and then change that. Lato, okay, so just type that in once you've clicked um, inside that box there. So make sure that's selected. We're going to center it. So we're going to center all the text. So click on that, align center. As you can see, this thing here is aligned. So normally it's like that, but when you change it, then it can move around, okay? So make sure that is centerized and you can play around with these settings here as well. I'm going to scroll down a little bit to body link and basically this is all the links in the body so these are links these are links so when you hover over it you'll see that 
it has like a underline. So we're going to change that to black. So just drag it down. And as you can see, everything turned black. Okay. And now what we're going to do is scroll down a little bit. Don't worry about this right now. We can change that color after we've fixed everything really easily. So for the body link hover, it's basically when you hover over the link, it's going to show the color or the effect that you put on it. So for example, if we put bold, then when we hover over the links, then it should go bold. Okay, so as you can see, something like that. But I just want to close that. And I want to change this color to a sort of really dark gray. And that code is that. And just type that in. Okay, and then we're going to just save and publish for now. So after we've done that, we're going to move to the forms. So basically for the forms, it's something like this, um, the buttons and also the email field where you actually type it in. So we basically edit that and we're going to set the form fields here, the border to solid. And we're going to change it to a light gray and one pixel. So it basically edits, this is a field and it basically edits the border around there, that light gray border. So if you change that, hopefully I think it'll go bold. So you change that, then it goes like a thicker sort of border. I want to keep it nice and thin. It's up to you. Scroll down a little bit. I want to change the text size for that. So 14 pixels. Okay, as you can see, it went a little bit smaller. And then that's also lasso as well. And then we're going to align center. So that aligns the text into the center. So the search bar, when you type it in, it aligns in the center. Scroll down a little bit and scroll down to form buttons and Form buttons basically means the button here. We're going to change the defaults for it. So all the buttons will be changed to this default setting. We're going to set the background color first to a black color. So hopefully that's going to go black. Okay, so that goes black. But when you hover over it, it doesn't show up. It doesn't show any hover color. Okay, so we need to change the form button hover. But before we do that, we're going to add a border, so solid, change the border color to black as well. Change that and then change this to about, oops, scroll down to about two pixels. Just wait until that loads up. Okay, so now we're going to edit the forms button hover and we're going to change the background color to a white color. So when you hover over it, it's going to be white. So as you can see, it turns up white like that. So that's all good. And then we're going to scroll down a little bit and we're also going to set the hover as well. So set that to solid and set this to black, set it to two pixels. When we hover over it, it should um, stay something like that. Okay. Then we're going to change the text color inside as well. So we're going to change the text color to black. So as you can see, it looks much nicer now. So after we've done that, we're going to set the header. So click on header tab and scroll down a little bit. We're basically going to edit the hover color for the site title. I'm going to scroll down to the header link hover and we're going to set that to a dark gray sort of and hopefully that will change. Okay so you can I'm not sure if you can see it but it's very subtle because we've already edited the rest we're going to leave the rest of them like that and just save and publish and now I'm going to scroll down and as you can see it looks pretty good now. We're going to change the formatting and also the styling for your post. So basically we're going to click on post here, scroll down to post title, and we're going to change the, basically the font size for it to about 24 pixels. So it's a little bit smaller and lasso again. Then we're going to change it to capitalize it like that and then we're going to align it to the center okay then we're going to scroll down and for the color of it we're going to change this to white and then for the background color we're going to change it to black okay so it's pretty much that easy you can you don't have to do it you could keep it maybe something like you know just black or red just any color that you want but i think it looks good like that so that's why i did this okay and then we need to do, we need to change the post title hover. 
So this is the post title and once we hover over it, we're going to change the effect for it, okay? So we're going to add an underline effect. Okay, so when you hover over it, it should go underline, but we need to change the color as well. So we need to change the color of that to white. So the default is red, as you can see. And then there you go. You can also edit the other settings, such as the post meta. Yeah, post meta. Basically, the post meta equals, you know, the date and also the tags, the category, but I'm not going to show you how to edit that. I just want to show you where it is so you can actually play around with the settings here yourself. So basically, we're going to click on save and publish. And now we're going to go to edit the easy Google font. So click on this um, arrow tab, back arrow, and I'm going to click on typography, default typography. As you can see here, it basically helps you set a sort of default sizing and font and also you can select the thickness of the actual font so i think that adds a you know nice professional touch to it we're going to edit the heading one i'm going to show you show you how to do that so click on edit and we're going to change the font to lato again so font family lato and as you can see you can change the font weight and also the style here as you can see, it's like really thin now, but I want to change it to maybe regular, like that. Okay, so that looks good. And then what we want to do is also set a default size for it. So we want to click on this appearance tab here, and you can change the font sizes here. So we're going to change this to about 70 pixels, and you can also change the letter spacing as well. So this is the H1 tag, I believe. So as you can see, and we can change the letter spacing, which makes it wider a little bit, but you can click on reset to make it default and make sure you never edit the positioning because what that does is when you actually set a text, for example, to a H1 tag it automatically it will move to the positioning set here and then you'll realize it's just not going to work. Okay. So just don't do that. You can edit the positioning by aligning it to center or whatever you want, or you can add in the padding, anything like that, but don't do it here. Okay. And then click on save and publish for now. And if you click on this tab here, you can edit the font for, you know, for the paragraphs. Um, from h1 to h6 tag you could have you know several default fonts that you want to set it for so it's really going to save you a lot of time so click on x and have a look at the website okay so as you can see the website is taking shape and it's looking pretty much almost done so i also wanted to show you that you can also edit the styling for each individual module and by turning on the builder i'm going to show you how to edit the font for the sidebars Okay, so if we double click on this module here, double click on that, and then you'll need to go to the styling tab. And as you can see here, we can change the font for here. So for this one, we change it to 14 pixels. And then we're going to click on save and obviously you can change some other settings as well. I'm just showing you that you can do it for each individual module. It doesn't have to be the default one. Okay, so click on save. So there you go, and we're going to click on save here and also close it. I'm also going to show you where you can actually edit the sidebar because the archive pages and the category, category pages have a default sidebar. So they have a default sidebar and to change the actual font sizing for that, you'll need to go to customize and then go to themify options. Okay, that's already selected and then you can edit that on here, the sidebar tab, okay? So that's pretty simple and then you can save and then close it up. So congratulations again, we've basically finished our home page. As you can see, it looks very nice already. Now we need to build our about page, blog page and our contact page. It won't take very long because you already know the basics and I'm gonna go a little bit faster and we have already set the fonts and everything. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to go to our about page. Just click on that and turn on the builder. And then we're gonna split the row into two columns. Split that like that. And we're gonna drop a image module because we're gonna add a image. So drop it here. 
And then what we're going to do is image URL. We're going to browse library and upload an image from our computer. So it's this one here, profile picture. I believe that we have already uploaded that if you have followed this tutorial. So you can go to your media library and just click on that and then insert the file URL. Then we can deselect rounded and also deselect these ones. Just copy Control A or Command A, I think, and copy that onto your clipboard and paste that into the image link. So if you want to show in a light box, you can do that, or you can show it also in a new tab and you can add a zoom icon if you want to. Okay, so click on save. Okay, so that's done. Now we're going to add a text module because we're going to add a little about me part. Okay, so drop a text module into there. And we're just going to copy the text from my page here. So we're going to select about page and go down there. Let's grab this text here. Okay, about me and all this text here and just copy that to the clipboard. Okay, so paste that in as plain text like that and maybe hit a space here. As you can see here, we want to set the about me to a H2 tag. We're going to edit the H2 tag in the Easy Google Fonts typography um, plugin in a second. So just delete that for now. Now what we want to do is maybe centerize everything. Actually, maybe we don't because we already set it to default for the body to align into the center. So just click on save and see what happens. Okay, so that's already in the center. So let's just double click this again. And I wanna show you how you can actually add an icon without any, you know, getting the icon from some external place. You can just get it from using a short code. So let's just click on enter here and click on short codes and select icon. Okay, and then you can insert the icon here, any icon that you like. But the one that we're gonna use is the heart icon, I think. Okay, so there it is, finally found it. And click on that. And also you can add a link to that icon as well. For example, if you wanna link it to somewhere else, you can add in the, the URL into here. But for now, we just keep everything as default. And you can also change the icon color as well. Okay, so let's click on insert for now. And let's just type in Mia Miller. And then we're going to go to styling and we're going to add a little bit of padding because what I found was on mobile, it actually, the text is too close to the image here. Okay. So I'm going to add a little bit of padding, just 10 pixels and then click on save. And there you go. So right now we're going to save this and close it. And then we're going to set the H2 tag. Okay. So we're going to close that and go to our customize. So click on typography and default typography and then heading to and we're going to edit that font so the font family is going to be lasso again so click on that it's going to change the font weight maybe 300 and then for the appearance tab we're going to change the size to about a 36 okay and that's done so we're going to save and click the x button okay so that's done for our about page as you can see, that was really quick. And let's say you want to move this about text down a little bit, then you could just turn on the builder and sort of add some more padding. Okay, so that's really all you need to do. Just add a little bit of padding and yeah, or you can make the image a little bit smaller. To do that, you could do this probably. You could do something like that. And then you could have an image there or actually let's do something like this. And then for this image, you can also change the columns for each of the images. So you could do that to make it smaller, something like that. You could do that, you know, so you can play around with it. So as you can see, it looks pretty good. So right now we're going to head over to our blog page and edit that blog page. So click on your blog. Okay, so we're on our blog page and this is going to take like two minutes. So just turn on your builder and then change the row columns. So we want to change it to this one which is basically like a uh, one to two and one ratio. And what we can do now is drag in a post module into the middle. And then basically you just change the layouts to the one that you want. So I'm just gonna keep it as the default one. And basically you can also show the post by categories. Okay, just post by each individual category if you like. 
and you can limit the number of posts to actually show. So if you have like a hundred blog posts, you don't want them all to show on the same page. You might want to limit that. So let's scroll down and you can order them by descending or ascending, order them by date and all these other things here. And you can hide the feature images. You can also, you know, hide the post date, which I'm going to do. I might hide the post meta as well. So then all you need to do is click on save. And if you don't like this layout, then you can change it. And you can also display all the blog post content or just a little bit of it or none. Okay. So click on save and that's pretty much it. Okay. So that looks pretty good. So let's just click on save and close that. Now we have to go to our contact page. Okay. So we're on our contact page and we're going to turn on the builder again. And basically we're going to set the columns to the same as we did for the blog. Okay. Cause I like that layout. And what we can do now is drop a text module into here and then we can type in some text, but I'm kind of lazy. So I'm just going to copy that text directly from here and set that to h2 tag h2 tag remember we set the heading to tag already in the easy google fonts so that's going to default into a um the font that we set before okay and then we're going to click on save and it should actually centerize because we set the align center earlier on now what we're going to do is drop the accordion module into here into the middle this is the really cool thing when you press it it opens up so for the module title just keep all that empty and for this we're going to deselect this for now and for the accordion color we want to set the transparent one the last one here and for the accordion title we're going to basically going to add three different accordions so we're going to scroll down here and just click on this one so business inquiries you know you might put your email in here and then just actually we're going to put the contact form sorry the contact form short code into here how we do that is basically just um, right click and open this in a new tab and we're going to go get the short code for the contact form so just click on this here and then you've got the short code here if you click on that then you can just copy that and come back here and essentially just paste this plain text so that's really easy and then we're going to add in a new row the new row will be the business hours so you might want to put that one there so business hours paste that in here go back here monday to friday or just set your own hours up to you and paste that in add in another one which is where am i so you could add your address for your business or whatever you want copy that paste this into here Okay, so that's done. Then what we need to do is we need to go to the styling panel. So we need to set the font color to black. Um, if we don't, it's actually default will be set to dark gray. So I want the color to be black. Just set that to black for now. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of padding, a little bit of spacing. So we want to add 20 pixels to the top and then 20 pixels to the bottom as well. So we want some space to make it all look good and then click on save and there you go. So that part is done really quickly. Now we're going to drop a map module because I'll show you how to add a map. Okay. So just drop one in there and then just type in any address. So for example, you know, Manhattan in New York. Okay. And you can play around with the settings here. For example, you could zoom it in closer you know, change the borders or anything like that. But I don't think you really need to mess around with that, to be honest. So let's just click on save and there you go. So if you want to move this map, then you could just move it down here. Obviously it's not going to show up properly right now, but if you go save it now and click on close and then it'll show up fully. Okay. So let's click on this. And as you can see, when we click on that, this thing doesn't close up. So I'm going to show you how to edit that. And I'm also going to show you how to make the map sort of black and white if you want that, of course. Okay. So turn on the Themify Builder. Now just double click on this, the accordion module and select this one, the expand and collapse, the accordion one and click on save. So that will do it. So what happens is when we close this, we open this and for example, they might fill in some details, send you a message. 
they might click on business hours and that thing closes up, okay? And that thing closes up. So that's really professional, really easy and simple. Now what we need to do is we need to edit the page. So we're basically going to change the map into grayscale and to do that, all we need to do is to edit the contact page. So this will basically only affect the contact page. It won't affect any other pages. For the image filter, you might change that to grayscale. And then we can just click on update. And as you can see, you can actually edit the page appearance individually as well, because you know how we set the Themify settings default for all the pages before but you can actually edit them for each individual page as well. So if you don't want the specific header that we have, then you can change it for each individual page as well. So just click on view page and you'll see what I mean by the grayscale map. There you go. So that's pretty much done. So our home page is done, about page is done, blog page is done, contact page is done, and we've basically finished building our whole entire website in about 90 minutes. So let's click on our homepage. Okay, so before we finish, I, I wanna go through a couple of things. And one of them is how to make it more mobile responsive. So let's double click this and I'll show you what I mean by that. And let's change this shop to shopping, okay? So, shopping and let's link this again and add link, okay? And then click on save. And now the word is much longer now, okay? So if we save it and actually close it here and we minimize that screen, then you'll see that the shopping word cuts off. It doesn't show it fully. So we need to minimize the text size when the actual screen size changes. So when the screen size changes, then the text will also um, be smaller, okay? So I'm gonna show you how to do that. It's gonna be really easy and quick. So what we're going to do is click on customize and then go to my blog tutorial, um, text tutorial. So we're going to scroll down to the very bottom and it's going to say tips and tricks. Okay. And we're going to copy in this code here at media screen um, here and that one. So copy that and paste this into custom CSS, paste it onto the top, paste this plain text. Now we're going to scroll down here. And as you remember, this one is the H1 tag. So what this means is when the screen width is 400 pixels or less, then the H1 tag will actually go smaller. And same with the H2 tag, it will go smaller. So we're gonna save and publish and I'll show you what I mean. So if we sort of go like that, if the screen goes smaller, then the text will go smaller as well. So as you can see, if it's less than 480 pixels, the text goes smaller. You can change the sizes of that as well. So you only really need to edit this part, the font size. So you might want to change it to 2 EM. It'll even go a little bit smaller, but I think about three should be fine. And you can do this for you know your H3 tags, your H2 tags, and by simply just copying this code here. So this is copy this code. And if you want to add a H3 tag, then you just hit enter once, paste that code in, change this letter to H3, and then you can change the font size as well. So let me show you another example. We're going to save and publish. And let's go to our about page, about page here. And then we're going to scroll down. And this is the H2 tag. So we can change the sizing of that as well. So you might be two. EM, so you might want to change it to 2 EM, okay? So that looks about good, and yeah, that's about it. So save and publish, and that looks good. Let's open it up, okay? Now, for the images, sometimes it might not be fully responsive, and that's because the when you turn on the builder, and this image is in a sort of a row container, if you actually add some code to make it responsive, then it'll look something like this. When you, you know, minimize it, then the image will be like that and the text will be like that. Okay, so to fix that problem, um, what would I would do is to actually, I'll show you an example. So if you go to a shop like misguidedau.com, then if you minimize the screen, for example, this image here, then the text actually goes smaller as well. Same with the image. So when you minimize it, 
then everything goes small like that. So what you can do is, let's go to Photo, and we've got this image here, then we've get some text, and let's just say we want to type in a title, and what I do is maybe change the color to white, make it a little bit bigger, okay, and then just make it like that, move this into the center, like that, maybe change it to a little bit smaller, it's a bit too big, then 150, move this back into the center if I can, okay, and what we do is let's just save this onto our computer as normal, save it, and we're going to save it as this one here, click on save and replace, you'll have to upload an image module, so let's drop an image module into this row container here, or you can actually drop a slider module as well, okay? So you can't add it as the background image, you'll have to drop an image module. So click on this and delete that. We're going to browse library and we're going to upload that file. We're going to delete this file first and upload that file. Click on open, insert file and we're going to click on save. Okay, so we've got the inspire inside the image, okay? And close that, close this. And let's say, for example, we minimize the screen to a mobile screen size, then it should shrink down perfectly like that, okay? So if you want to do that, then that's how you do it, okay? But if you want to add actual, you know, a button inside there, then I recommend you get the Slider Pro add-on by Themify. I have a tutorial on my YouTube channel for that as well. So make sure to check that out. I think it's really awesome because you can add a button, you can add in text as well and it will scale down perfectly. Yeah, so besides adding the image module in there, you can also add the slider module. So now I'm going to teach you how to make the header or navigation bar here sort of transparent without this line here. So to do that, it's really easy. What you need to do is go to the page that you want to remove the line here for. So just click on edit page. And then this is the back end. We'll need to scroll down here and click on page appearance. As you can see, you can edit a lot of the things on the page specifically for this page. So what we need to do is change the header background here from solid background to a transparent background. Click on that. And then we can update. And then if we view the page, the line should be gone. Okay, the line is gone, so the about page, you might need to do it for all the pages as well if you want to, or you can just leave it as that. Well, this concludes the videos. Thank you guys so much for watching for additional videos on how to edit the mobile screen menu and also changing the post date color. Check out my top 7 FAQ video on my channel. And for exclusive videos such as adding in a shop page, go to hoganshua.com and join as a member. And don't forget about the competition, check out hoganshua.com forward slash competition and my Facebook page for more details. And finally, if you have any questions, leave it down below. Make sure to like it, share it and also subscribe and I'll leave you with some inspiring words from Jim Carrey. You can spend your whole life imagining ghosts, worrying about the pathway to the future, but all there will ever be is what's happening here. And the decisions we make in this moment which are based in either love or fear. So many of us choose our path out of fear disguised as practicality. What we really want seems impossibly out of reach and ridiculous to expect, so we never dare to ask the universe for it. I'm saying, I'm the proof that you can ask the universe for it. Please. And if it doesn't happen for you right away, it's only because the universe is so busy fulfilling my order. 